What's up, YouTube? So John's out of town. He's gonna be on vacation for a month, and we didn't really know what to do, what kind of content to make. So we got a special guest coming in today to make take over the channel and make some great content for you. And we're about to go pick him up at the airport in our Mercedes-Benz limo and wait till you see who it is. Without John Tamarian today, I'm your host, and we are in my 2009 Spiker C8 Laviolette in Miami. I just bought this car from Missy Elliott, Missy Misdemeanor Elliott. As you can imagine, huge fan of her music. I am, but uh, definitely her taste in cars. She's got an amazing collection of stuff, including this, which she bought brand new from the dealership Motor Cars of Georgia, where I used to work. Now, I started working there in 2009, the same model year as this car, but that was in October. They'd already sold all the Spikers. Now, they made about 285 Spiker cars over the course of 2005 to 2010. They thought about doing some other things, but they never really did. And now, I think they represent something very special, very collectible, and very underappreciated from a value perspective. Now, of course, they have started to see appreciation, like most interesting cars over the last few years. Values and the recent bring a trailer auctions and things like that are now well over $500,000. But for a long, long time, you could pick up these cars for less than 250 grand. And when you think about what the car represents in terms of the craftsmanship, the rarity, the purity from a driving perspective, largely based on the simplicity of the ways the cars are constructed, it's super duper awesome. They use a 4.2 liter Audi V8 with 400 horsepower. The early cars have timing belts. These later cars have timing chains. You do see a lot of Audi influence, the Lamborghini Gallardo steering wheel. They, the keys still say Audi on them. The engine still says Audi on it, as well as Spiker Holland. And so where else are you gonna find an awesome Dutch supercar with a gorgeous interior, hand-turned aluminum dash, Obviously, the exposed shift linkage is something that the car is very well known for. And it's just a great, great car to drive. Like a Mercy, the front axle is narrower than the rear. You get this lovely glass roof on the laviolettes, the coupes. The spiders are awful fun, too. They're a frameless windshield, so not entirely legal in every state. But hey, nobody really worries too much about it. They make a good enough noise, much like a V8 R8. And they really do handle nicely. You've got floor-mounted pedals, floor-hinged pedals, and so it gives you a totally different experience than you'd find anywhere else. And something that obviously didn't like catch on from a coach building perspective, but the cars are a lot like what you'd get out of a Pagani today. You're outsourcing the powertrain, you're making a very cool, very beautiful coach built car, and it's something that you can really just enjoy being inside. Now, as you'll see, I'm pretty cramped in here. I don't have a lot of clearance above my head and the glass roof. Probably not gonna wear a helmet in it comfortably, but that's not uncommon in these things. It's just a very, very special, distinctive, unique car, and a lovely place to be. Yeah, barely has power steering, but it does. knowing that it wouldn't start, 
but John and his guys threw a fresh tank of gas in it, a new battery, and it started right up, and it drives wonderfully. It's due for some tires. You can feel that they're not totally round, and it needs a service, but other than that, it's got 2,383 miles. The thing is brand new. Now, early Spikers actually had MSRPs in the mid threes, but they didn't sell all that well, and so they actually dropped the MSRPs for the later cars, the Laviolette. So this car would have been just shy of 300 grand. It is black over some Bordeaux, they have a name for it, uh, this red, but I think they are just all so unique, so distinctive and so special that you really can't go wrong from a collecting perspective, from an ownership perspective, and fortunately from a driving perspective. It's got an inboard pushrod suspension, things that Lamborghini just started doing on Aventadors just recently. A lot of really, really unique stuff, a functional roof scoop. And again, these are all features that are now becoming popularized, but back then, this thing was totally unique. It was featured in some really, really special movies. There was one called The One with Statham and Jet Li. There was one, Basic Instinct 2. Uh, you, see them, you see them in occasional music videos and things like that. But overall, it's just a very special, very cool, very beautiful car that's ultimately unlike anything else you'd ever find. So we're back at Curated, and the Spiker is just about as awesome as I imagined it could be. But there's a lot of other awesome things here, as always, in the showroom, especially this. This is a McLaren Mercedes SLR 722. And John just got it as part of a gigantic multi-car deal he explained to me. And I really, really do love SLRs. I bought one last year that was previously owned by Paris Hilton, made famous by Britney Spears doing this, getting out of it without underpants on. And I drove it a lot. I really, really enjoyed the car. Obviously it was just the regular one. I will say in Georgia and several other states, you can't have cars with side exit exhaust that are newer than 2006. And so you can't title this there. You'd have to use a LLC in another state perhaps, which is getting even more difficult day by day. But this is a much more special car raved about by Richard Hammond as hypercar royalty next to a Mercy SV. And that is high praise, very, very high praise. But I, uh, I have to say it is gorgeous in person, a lot of special tweaks. Now, several things have been done to this one that I'm sure in curating it, they will undo these matte veins and things of that nature. But how cool is this? How rare is it? And it has just a lot of very, very unique little twists, like the much lighter wheels, the lighter suspension. They shaved an awful lot of weight off of the regular SLR, which was not a light car. This isn't a light car either, but it's headed in the right direction. And if we come around here, you'll see more matte blackness to the nose, the OEM carbon fiber lower spoiler. And obviously we got a little more power, a little more torque, a little more carbon, a little more pretty stuff and a little bit more rarity, which is always the recipe for a good time. So I'll uh, pop in here and just see how much nicer it is. I'm also gonna see, mine had the medium seats that Paris ordered and they were awful tight. Goodness, this, whoever drove this doesn't have a 35 inch inseam. Okay. 3,900 miles, mine had about 30,000. I sold it to somebody in Bulgaria, but yeah, this has at least medium, or probably at least large, if not extra large seats that are a lot more accommodating than the mediums, but it's a really, really nice car. I took it on Gold Rush last year. In fact, even the year before, there was another guy in an SLR and I drove his most of the time because he didn't like it. Uh, and his female co-driver liked it less. So uh, they're, they're really, really cool cars. Very, very special. Obviously rivaled the Enzo and the Carrera GT when the car was originally released. And then when this car came out, 2008, nine, it was, uh, it was not necessarily up against much more in terms of hyper cars. It was very much against a Mercy SV, against a Bugatti Veyron perhaps, and against a lot of other fantastic cars. Oh, I do love the carbon floors. This is a special thing. Somebody's gonna love it. 
Well, be sure to tune in next week as well because I am going to sit down, still taking over this YouTube channel, and I'm going to tell you why all the advice that John Tamarian gives you is wrong.